So this is this is the first thing. And the, this slide is not, I'm not going to talk about details of it. This, this form is, is trying to impress you how complicated my work <laughs> is. So, 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 so let's turn to our second question. Why we want to make everything so abstract? Well, the answer is this is concrete. But can we study it? It's, 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 you, you copy this formula, it takes tr at least 20 seconds. And uh, in, in, in my computation, I need to use this for 400 times, and each time I have to copy it. So, so it's, it's technically, at least technically, it's not possible. Okay? So we use new symbols to represent the whole expression. This expression is so complicated, but we use new symbols to, to express it. And this is a very simple symbol, right? We use Q per psi to represent the whole, almost the whole paragraph of mathematics formulas, okay? And, uh, but then you, 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 get, you get something, so, 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 so then you get something more abstract because then it takes time to explain what Q per psi is. Even though it's very, you, you can write this Q per psi one second at a time. You can write many, many things and you can manipulate it with this Q per psi. Q per psi is equivalent to these concrete things. Okay? But then in the mathematical research, we have to use this strange symbol or abstract symbol and we have to go abstract if we want to study the the, the more complicated things. So, so, so the general rule is, is the more complicated, the more deeper object you want to study, the more abstract you need to, to do the job. So this is one example. So the second example probably is why, more widely known. So, so many physics laws have the common mass background. For example, this is Newton's laws of universal gravitation. So, so for, for two particles, if we have two particles, we have universal gravitation, and the universal gravitation can be computed by the, the force is equal to some constant g times a constant m1, a constant m2, which is not important in our talk, divided by r squared, which is the distance between the two particles. Okay, so that's, that's Newton's law of gravitation. And we also have Coulomb's laws for, for, charge, for, for, for char electronically charged particles. And th th there's an electronic force, F, which can also be written as the Coulomb laws tells us that it is a constant times a constant times a constant divided by the distance square. Okay? So you see, in mathematics, we make a little bit abstraction. Instead of studying them one by one concretely, so we study the following function. Y equals a constant times one over R squared. So, so this, we, we view this as a function Y of R. Okay? And uh, whatever result we get from this function applies to both laws and probably more other laws. So, so that's another reason for us to make more abstract, to make abstraction. So the more abstraction, the widely application it is expected. And uh, so this is a statement which I, I learned from a famous mathematician. So the evolution of mathematics largely depends on the evolution of symbols. So, so when, when, you, when, when the mathematics problem becomes more and more complicated, it is very tricky to design the appropriate level of symbols. That means that to define the appropriate level of abstractions to, to, to study it. So, so this is uh, the conclusion.